Welcome to Getting Started with Trixbox. We're going to show you Trixbox 2.2, the brand new version of Trixbox. We're going to go through downloading, installing, and basic configuration. What is Trixbox? Well, Trixbox is a bootable CD-ROM image that will automatically install Linux, Asterisk, FreePBX, MySQL, Apache, Sugar CRM, the Trixbox dashboard, and a handful of other tools and scripts. On a fairly modest machine, Trixbox can be up and running in about 30 minutes. So who can use Trixbox? Well, it's good for both beginners and experts. The beginners get a basic system up and running that requires very little in Trixbox or telephony skills, while experts commonly use Trixbox because it's a fast, reliable way to get all the major components that are commonly used in a PBX system up and running very quickly. Anybody with basic computer skills can get Trixbox up and running. However, to properly manage, maintain, update, and troubleshoot a production PBX system will require some basic Linux editing skills and some experience with basic telephony. So, while a lot of people may say that anybody can run Trixbox, sometimes it does take some extra skills. But if you get into trouble, you can always call Trixbox support and they can help you through any major problem that you may ha be having. To download Trixbox, just point your web browser to http colon slash slash trixbox.org. Click on the download tab, click on the link for the latest download version, select the ISO image to download, and select a mirror site closest to you and click on the download link. This will download about a 550 meg file, so be prepared, this can take a while. Once you have the image, this is a CD-ROM image, it's not a file that you put on a CD so you need to understand the difference. You will need to burn the image to a CD and not burn the file as that won't work properly. If you're having problems with the CD-ROM booting and you put that CD in your regular Windows machine and all you see is the Trixbox ISO file on the drive, then you did not burn it properly. You have to burn it as an image, not as a file. A good free burning tool is InfraRecorder at inforecorder.sourceforge.net and in that program you simply say copy, copy an image file to a disk, select the ISO image and hit record and it will do all the work for you. So once you have the CD burned you want to put the CD in the drive of a dedicated machine and boot off the CD. At the first prompt just hit the enter key to begin the install process. Be prepared this will format all of the drives in the system. Every drive that is connected will get formatted. So do not do this on your standard workstation. Make sure this is a dedicated machine that's ready to go because all the data on the machine will be wiped out and a new operating system with all the software will be installed. And then just follow the prompts. You're going to be asked for the time zone, your keyboard type, and a root password that you'll use later on. We're actually going to go through all these steps so you understand exactly what's involved. Once the system is all up and running, you're just going to log in and configure the system. You'll log in as root. The password is whatever password you selected during the install. And then from another machine, because there is no web browser on the Trixbox machine, browse to the web interface to configure your system. Again, we're going to go through this so you know exactly what we're talking about. Once you've booted up off your Trixbox CD, you'll be given this initial display with the boot prompt. It will sit here until you make some type of action. All you're going to want to do here is simply hit the enter key. Now remember, this will format your hard drive and destroy all the existing data on your computer. Hitting the enter key will start the load process. It will go through and it will install several of the drivers that it will need, and then it will come up and ask you for your keyboard type. On the screen, you can just simply hit enter if you have a standard US type of keyboard. Next, it's going to ask you for what time zone you're in. Well, if you're not in New York time, you might want to change that. So I'm just going to tab, and now I can change my time zone. Well, I'm in Los Angeles, so I'm going to go there, tab over to the OK, and hit the Enter key. Now it's going to ask me for a root password. This is the password that I'm going to use to log into my system later. So this is a critical part of security. You want to make sure this is something that you're going to remember, otherwise you're going to really have some issues when it comes to trying to get back into your system later on. So we're just going to use a simple password for right now. tab, hit the OK key, and now the system's going to go and run by itself. 
it's going to take about 15 minutes for the entire process to complete. It's going to format the system, install Linux, install Apache, MySQL, Asterisk, the Trixbox dashboard, and everything else. And then it's going to ask us to log in, and it'll tell us the IP address. From there, we'll be able to configure the rest of the system. So we'll just fast forward here a little bit, and we'll get right to the login prompt. Once you've got to the final boot up screen and now into the login screen, it's time for us to log in. We use root and the password that we used during the install process. As you can see here, it's now saying to access the Trixbox web GUI, use this URL, and it's given me an HTTP colon slash slash and an IP address. I now go to my other machine, like my Windows or Macintosh machine, open up a web browser, and go to that IP address to configure the system. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Once you go to the Trixbox homepage, you'll be able to see the different tools and options that are available to you. We have the Asterisk recording interface where people can check their voicemail, a Meet Me control room where you can control some of the actions that go on within a conference room, the Flash Operator panel where you can see the status of your network, your extensions, your queues, your lots, and your trunks, Sugar CRM, which is a very powerful contact customer relationship management system. But what we really want to do is switch over to admin mode. So we're going to click on switch. We're going to log in with maint and the password is password by default. This is going to give us our admin status screen. From here we can see the server status, some helpful links of where to go for some more information, network utilization, memory utilization, our mounted file systems, and a quick snapshot of what's happening with our asterisk system. From here, we can go to our package manager to do updates and installs, our asterisk menu to do configuration, edit config files, see what's going on with our box, get our some call data reports. We have system information, system maintenance, a secure tunnel for our terminal emulation, and we can go to our network settings, change repositories, or register our box. We're just going to go to Free PBX to configure our system. Now, Free PBX is the tool that we use to do all of our configuration. The first thing you're going to want to do is go to the Tools menu. From here, we're going to go to the Module Admin, check for updates online, come over here and say Upgrade All, click on Process, and you can see it's ready to process all of the updates that are available. We'll go ahead and confirm that. Once that's done, we're going to apply our configuration changes. Now, you're going to want to do this a couple times just to make sure you have all the possible module updates. So again, we'll go back to Tools, go back to our Module Admin, check for updates online, process those updates, and it says there are no actions to perform, so our system is up to date. So let's just go to our Setup menu, and we'll go set up some extensions. So we'll click on Extensions. We're going to do a generic SIP device. For an extension, I'll use 200, and I'll put in my name here. Now this display name is going to be used when someone calls into the IVR and selects the company directory. So they can search by the first name or the last name. If we have direct DIDs or specific things we want to use for our outbound caller ID, we can enter that. The secret is the password that's used for the device. Now we, you can see there's some fax handling, privacy manager, dictation services, recording options, all kinds of things. But we're just going to come down and enable voicemail and we'll just set up a simple voicemail password. Again you can see more options here. You can mouse over to see what the different options are. You can send as an email attachment, play the caller ID, or play the different options that are available. We're just going to go ahead and submit that. Now every time you make a change you'll see the red apply configuration changes bar. You want to click on that to make sure that your changes are taking effect. Now there's a lot more to setting up a Trixbox system than just setting up extensions. There's trunks, inbound and outbound routing, the IVR, and system recordings. But we can't go into that all in one quick setup guide. So experiment, play around, and have fun with your new Trixbox system. Thank you for listening to another tutorial from Asterisktutorials.com.